What is up guys, a little update for you. I don't think I've been this ill in a very long time. So I'm definitely not training today. It's very unlikely that I'll be training tomorrow unless something miraculous happens during the night and I'll wake up feeling great tomorrow, but I doubt it. Right now I don't feel too bad. I took some Lensip and I thought, okay, let me record a video. So we're gonna be doing something a bit different. We're gonna watch and react uh, to a video. Um, I know that this channel is new and I'm still finding my feet with it. This is not something that I'm planning on doing often, like reaction videos, but I thought let's do it just for fun, just for entertainment. So last night I was browsing on YouTube and I saw Men's Health just released Jake Gyllenhaal's workout routine for his new role in Roadhouse. Roadhouse! Roadhouse! And I thought, hold on, let me not watch it. Let's watch and react to it together today. I'm assuming Roadhouse is the remake of the classic, um, but I don't know that much about it. I haven't watched it. All I know is that he's meant to be a UFC or like an ex-UFC fighter, which I guess it makes sense with Conor McGregor being there. I actually really like Jake Gyllenhaal. He's one of my favorite actors. I think he's got an amazing range. He's really, really talented. Again, I don't know much about the movie. I only saw a few clips uh, from what I could see. He's in incredible shape, especially considering he's 44, I believe now. He's really lean, he's got his six back out. But I found him a little bit smaller than that other boxing movie he did, um, Southpaw. I thought he looked a bit bigger in Southpaw. Um, perhaps it's just my perception of things, but uh, I'd be curious to see what the training was like. So yeah, let's watch it together now. I know that usually this is Mike Israel's job. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind me doing it first this time. Um, he doesn't even know that I exist anyway. So the title says, Jake Gyllenhaal's workout to get his ridiculous roadhouse body. I always feel like the title is a bit deceiving, but okay, let's go. He's such an amazing actor. Jason Walsh, I'm coming to you from my studio Rise Movement in Los Angeles. Jason Walsh. I'm trying to think if I heard of him before from some other celebrities' workouts videos, but I can't recall his name. California and talk to you about Jake John Hall and the training that we did for Roadhouse. Yeah, look at your stomach. Never been done before. It's real. Don't mess around. Did Jake need aesthetics, but needed to perform stunts across from Conor McGregor, a professional app. Really? Does he do the stunts in this movie? What kind of stunts, right? Surely it's just like fighting. What else is it gonna be? Maybe some jumping and some stuff like that. Like surely you're not training in the gym for that kind of stuff, but anyway. UFC and then had to sit down and build a program that would ultimately build the foundation of the Dalton character. Generally, we spend a few minutes each session moving, trying to get the core body to mature up before moving into some sort of mobility, which you see here with the stick which is a great tool to help increase range of motion. Okay, so generally you don't really want to be doing static stretches before your workouts. Otherwise, you're definitely going to be losing on quite a bit of performance. You can do some dynamic stretches. I guess what they're doing is kind of borderline, but you know, if, if you call them mobility drills, then I'm assuming that you are challenging each muscle through the full range of motion in a way that perhaps is uh, to a degree that the muscle is not used to. So not sure if, you know, this is a good idea, but it all depends on the kind of workout they're gonna, that they're gonna be doing. Proteus is an amazing piece of equipment used mostly by performance centers to help train athletes in every plane of motion and also to help increase power production. Okay, I suppose this is kind of specific to the sport. So, you know, we can make sense of it. Um, not sure if I would do that right at the beginning of a session. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what kind of session it's going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be strength training. So um, I think so far in terms of the order of the exercises, I mean, doing static stretches at the beginning and doing heavy motion drills like that, it's very cardio really. So um, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't do it at the beginning of a session. <laughs> shadow box, don't shadow box in the gym. Okay, this is, this is just, you know, it's just cardio, it's just, high intensity training. I, I really don't see that being useful for any of the stunts it, it, it would be performing. So um, it's just hit training really. 
are a staple here at Rise Movement. We use them all the time to help increase strength and stamina at different joint angles. Again, it just it just really depends what the end goal is here. I think, you know, go, going back to it, I think the title is just quite a bit deceiving. If, if you're showing the kind of workout that you would need to get in that kind of shape, we're already starting on the wrong foot. Um, you know, we, we know that when it comes to hypertrophy, isometric contractions are not very good, it's especially when it comes to holding a contraction where the muscle is being shortened like it is here. And again, I really don't see this being useful for any of the stunts he could potentially do unless he has to perform a scene where he's holding on to a, you know, to the bottom of a train or a, or a car or some, some sort of, you know, fast and furious uh, kind of stunt. But I, I doubt that it would be him doing something like that anyway. Yeah, I'm a little bit skeptical now. Most of the sets that we do are time sets. We try to keep his work capacity up, keep him moving, keep him sweating, keep burning fat. We still want the heavy stuff. Again, this so is just heavy this is just work. cardio. It's fun. Like the, 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 these kind of workouts are so much fun. That's commitment. I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, and I feel a lot of gratitude. But I know that's, I know that's a crazy thing to say. Funny enough, if you didn't know this, um, ice baths are a great tool when it comes to recovery, but they essentially reduce inflammation. And the process of building inflammation is essential for muscle hypertrophy. So if you go and train really hard in the gym and then go and have an ice bath, you're definitely going to recover a lot faster. So from a performance perspective, it could be useful, but you're also missing out on some big potential gains. It's very counterproductive to what we actually do in the gym when we train with mechanical tension as close as possible to failure. You're taking away all that inflammation that we've been building for hours in the gym. I definitely wouldn't do them very often. The oh, finally. Work, one way, shape, or form, whether it's squats or deadlifts. Finally, some weight own, training. We keep the muscle coordination at a high. Uh, that kind of looked like a half rep. Mm, I wish I could see it. Maybe they're not showing it for that reason. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the first first compound movement that, that we're seeing today. Um, and that, that's what, exercise number five, something like that, you definitely wanna place it as soon as possible at the beginning of the session. You definitely don't wanna be doing the sled, you don't wanna be doing the isometric hold and all that stuff at the very beginning. Essential as it seems to be one of the limiting factors in the gym, we pepper in various exercises to keep grip tight. Okay. <coughs> Look, if, if you wanna improve your grip strength, do some heavy pulls, do some dead hangs. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with what he's doing, but I'm just really trying to understand what they're actually doing. Like, what, what is the purpose of, of this workout? Because if they're trying to make him look the part, why would you even spend time training his grip or training his forearm in isolation to any degree? What, what does he need to grip anyway? Here we see some examples more relatable to MMA training, keeping the body in check with offset loading and movements more imperative to sport. I still think that some proper resistance training would have been a lot more effective. I understand that offset loading might be useful, but the best way to get good at a certain sport is to practice the sport, is to practice those drills with real people in the ring. I think if you're doing additional training on top of that, you're better off doing some proper strength training. I think functional training definitely has its time and place, but we're also talking about an actor that needs to look the part. More cardio stuff. Variations of reps, sets, loads, and different tempos. Okay, flow press. Um, I mean, we all know about this one. The range of motion is quite limited. Um, don't understand why they would do a floor press. Why not do a dumbbell bench press or, or a Swiss bar bench press, but not on the floor. So you, you can actually get the full range of motion. I really don't see this being any more useful in any possible way. You can have a great trainer, a great oh, program, chain push -ups. great team. None of this matters. <laughs> Come on. The right person to do it all. Jake did the work. He earned it. He deserves this it. This is just gimmick. Also, also, also. Let, let, let's talk about this because 
let's say you really want to do some weighted push-ups, some, uh, you know, ch chain push-ups, whatever you want to call them. Don't put the chains on the lower back. That's not where you want to load extra resistance. That is just going to lower the hips down and making it harder for him to keep the bum up and to keep the spine more neutral. If you want to place some extra resistance, place it in between the shoulder blades, or not even between the shoulder blades, on the upper back, because that's going to be pushing directly down against the muscle that you're trying to target, so it will make more sense. But yeah, again, it's just, this is just gimmick, man. Again, it, they talked about this before. This is essentially functional training would have got so much more out of just doing two separate movements, perhaps a row and, and a bench press. And you only have a certain amount of hours in your day. You also need to recover from this stuff. You can't just, you know, be training all day. So surely you wanna be selective with the things that you know are really going to be effective to build the body. So in, in this case, to look the part. And if he needs to do any stunts, surely you wanna be practicing the drills for the stunts not doing any extra functional movements on top. Is it just me or he looks a bit smaller than when he played Southpaw? Oh, by my I favorite, need to double check on this. Primitive climbing sprints to finish him off. So this is 12 exercises. I'm assuming it's some sort of circuit. I'm assuming so. UFC weigh in in Las Vegas, um, taking a little bit of sugar, get a lot of reps in, push ups, sit ups, and voila, the muscles swell up and look full. Okay, so this is something uh, all bodybuilders know, um, and it's you know generally common practice. If you really want your abs to pop, let's say on a day or on a scene for an event before stepping on stage, you want to make sure that you don't don't train them a week before. And most definitely, you don't want to pump your abs before stepping on stage or before filming a scene where you really want your six pack on show. Because when you get them pumped, they actually lose a lot of separation. And this is why I also stop training them a few days before. Helps getting rid of any extra inflammation and getting even more definition. The mental fortitude, the level of patience it would going to take. Unless you train like this, you just don't understand. Okay. <laughs> to take the long road, to take the hard road, to take the high road. <laughs> 18, 19, 20. <laughs> this is a very long process. It took well over a year. Well to over a around. year. Thank you. Okay, if you, if you want to, obviously it depends on your starting point, right? But if you want to look like that, it, sh it shouldn't take you over a year. Uh, it doesn't really have that much muscle tissue uh, it's essentially it's just got really lean for the role. So if you're looking to just look that way and, and look the part, it, it shouldn't take you any more than four or five months. Obviously it depends on your on your starting point, but I'm pretty sure that Jake is, is naturally fairly lean. It probably would have spent the majority of the time building some, some more lean tissue on his frame to then cut down for the role. So if we had over a year, that's probably what I would have done. I would have bolt him up and build some more muscle, especially since we, we gotta remember that he's playing a bouncer. That's what he's supposed to be playing. And even as a UFC fighter, it could probably have a bit more muscle on him. And then, you know, in the last few months of prep, just cut down the body fat as much as possible. Okay, in conclusion, I'm uh, probably a little bit disappointed. Uh, I knew that it was gonna be gimmick for, 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 the, for the most part, but, I guess I was expecting just a little bit more weight training and a little bit more excitement in this whole workout routine. I'm not saying you necessarily only need to do weight training to, you know, to look as muscular and as lean as possible for a certain role. I do understand the need of doing perhaps some functional training, some HIIT training and some weird training, especially as an actor, I think. You also want to feel a certain way. It's not just all about how you look, it's also about how you feel. So. There might be a certain style of training that is not necessarily conventional that perhaps makes you feel more ready for the role. But realistically here, what he could have done was just a lot more strength training to really build his physique. And then some HIIT training, why not? Perhaps once a week or even twice a week, considering it didn't really have to build that much size. And then for everything regarding the stunts, you just want to be practicing the stunts and the drills. 
Every time I make considerations about stunts, I always think about Jackie Chan. What would he do? I'm pretty sure that he doesn't do any functional training in the gym. <laughs> I actually need to do some research on this, but I'm pretty sure that he does some heavy strength training. Maybe not now, but definitely back in the day. And then fuck loads of gymnastics. And that's what you would typically do to get ready to do a lot of stunts, especially fighting stunts. But anyway, I'm not an expert on that. What I can tell you is that if you want to look like Jake Gyllenhaal in, in his role, you don't need to be training for over a year for that. You probably don't need to do as many sessions as he did every week. A physique like that, you can easily build doing some strength training three times a week, dieting more or less restrictively depending on how naturally lean you are. And obviously, depending on your starting point, it shouldn't take you anything longer than five, six months, even if you're slightly overweight. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time here, I'm posting one video a day for a year straight. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.